This is Mika. She is a Husky Malamute mix. And believe it or not, she was here about a month ago, but she is just like crazy filled with undercoat. She is so sweet. I had to give her a big love break before we start her blowout. When a dog has a lot of undercoat, I like to blow out the loose coat so it's easier to get to the skin when I'm washing her and the wash is much more effective. She has a piece of plant hanging off of her leg. I'm not really sure. I didn't notice that when I was washing her. I guess I washed it off at some point. Look at her waiting so patiently while I prep her shampoo. Notice her back end. The hair is kind of clumped together. That's just undercoat buildup. She has pretty long rear end hair. Undercoat can build up super fast, so it's important to brush three to four times a week with an undercoat rake, a slicker brush, and a comb. I'll do a video on me brushing her next. Now it's time to do the dry blowout. Like I said before, this will loosen up the undercoat and you'll start to notice a lot of hair flying around. That's undercoat that is coming out without treatment, just super loose and ready to come out. All of this hair is dead hair and it needs to be removed so the dog can regulate its temperature. Think of it this way. Built up undercoat is kind of like wearing a sweater in the summer. So it's really important to get your dog in for a professional bath so that we can really effectively get down to the skin and remove as much undercoat as we can. Not only will she look much better, but she will feel better too. A lot of people are surprised when we quote a three to four hour groom time. She actually takes me about four to five hours depending on the day. Today she took me five hours. The reason being is her bath takes about 45 minutes and in order to get a good brush out on her, she has to be completely bone dry. Otherwise you're just gonna be brushing spots and it's not gonna effectively be taking out the undercoat. See that hair on the side of her leg that I'm blowing off right now? That's undercoat ready to come out. If your dog has a lot of these little tufts or little areas, I think it's time for a brush. <laughs> when blowing out a long haired dog, it's important to stay pretty close to the skin. If you do too much back and forth far away from the skin, it creates what's called whip knots, which are these little tiny knots. It's, they tie up at like the end of the hair and they're a pain in the butt. They just create a whole new set of problems. The dry blowout doesn't have to be perfect. It's really just to start off and make it a better and more effective bath. I use my line brushing technique for the blow dryer too. This allows me to really get to the skin. Notice how I'm lifting up the hair. That's an area where a lot of undercoat likes to hide. And when a dog can lay down on some cool concrete, it really helps them stay cool if that's all clear of undercoat. I'm so thankful for masks right now because with all that hair flying around, there's also a lot of dust and dander. And as you can see, I get a little covered. It's not a clean job, this one. <laughs> she is such a lover. I just have to squeeze her. She's so soft and cuddly. Look at, I think she gave me a kiss there. Now it's time to wash. I wash her in sections. She's a pretty large dog. Um, so getting her wet to the skin takes a little while. Good shake, Mika. And getting her completely washed and not missing areas, it's important to section off your dog. So here I'm focusing on getting most of her body wet, but really focusing on getting the front half of her wet because that's the first part I'm going to wash. You can see I have my shampoo prepped. She's not getting a de-shed service. She's just getting a basic bath with conditioner and some extra brushing. She takes about three bottles of shampoo to thoroughly wash her coat. Here's a quick time lapse of me washing her front half. Scrubbing her legs and feet really well is important because the feet, those, that's probably the dirtiest part of the dog. That was one thing I really struggled with when I was a young groomer. I wouldn't get the feet clean enough and then I'd end up having to wash the dog again so I really consciously like scrub 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 the feet just to make sure that everything is nice and clean. This is me doing her back half. Sometimes I feel like the tail on these type of dogs are like a whole 
little dog. <laughs> her tail is probably the size of a small dog, I would say, and it's important to get that really clean too. I already rinsed her front half, but I'm going to wash more of her front half again just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. And dogs with really thick coats should be washed a minimum of two times. This really makes sure that you don't miss any spots on the legs or on the face and it gets them really, really squeaky soft and clean. I don't know what squeaky soft is, but I like it. <laughs> I'm using up the rest of the shampoo just to get anything in the front that I might have missed. And I'm really scrubbing those butt cheeks. I couldn't really get a good angle here in the bathtub. And I really scrubbed the tail. Look how soapy my hands are. And do it again. Get it. Scrub, scrub. Twist the tip. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Really, really get underneath the belly. It's really important to get under there because when you rinse, where's all the dirt go? The belly. So make sure to scrub that and make sure nothing sticks around. I rinse her completely before I put her conditioner on. It's a wet job, especially when they shake, but she's actually really good. She doesn't shake too, too much. So some Huskies, man, they shake constantly. Like every time a piece of water gets on them, they're shaking and you are just drenched. She got me pretty drenched, but look at her. She says, oh, get that water out of my tail. Oh, yeah, get it. Get all that soap out. Get it out, dear. So I'm a good girl. Look how good I am. After she's rinsed completely, I get some conditioner and I focus a lot on her back end because that's where her undercoat was really thick and I really want that undercoat to come out with the blow dryer. This is a very relaxing part of our bath. She gets a nice massage. I talk to her and tell her how much of a good girl she is and that she's being so good. After her coat is fully saturated, it's time to let her soak for at least five minutes. Of course she has to shake. Mika, I just told everybody that you hardly ever shake. She really doesn't hardly ever shake, but I think it's cute when they do it. It's important to let the conditioner soak for at least five minutes or so, just to make sure it really soaks into the coat. You like that. She says, I like the way that feels. That's nice. I think... I thought her face looked like it was smiling, so I was like, whoop, smile. <laughs> and now we wait. I did a time lapse here. I take this opportunity to hose off the bathing area after blowing her coat out. A lot of loose hair is hanging around, so kind of clean it off so it's not all full of hair. Now I rinse, and I didn't film me blow drying her, but look how much nicer her coat looks already. I need to blow myself off. Woo! <laughs> Part two with her brushing coming.